Hello, this is Susan Brown, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to prepare amazing mold rubber from amazing crafting products. Here is the amazing mold rubber. This comes from Amazing Crafting Products Company by Alumalite, and it can be found at the website. Apologize about the glare. www.moldputty.com and this is a two-part silicone rubber that comes in a two-part process and I'm going to mix up the whole container and I'm going to show you how I prepare a couple of items in pouring the mold rubber so I'm going to set this aside for right now and show you the items that I'm going to attempt to mold because they're a little bit difficult and might be a little bit tricky first thing is I'm going to make a stamp slash texture plate with this beautiful dish but it has this gorgeous ornate circular texture on the bottom. You can hear that? And so that's what I'm going to pour the silicone rubber on. The thing that's great about the mold rubber, I could certainly do this with the Amazing Mold Putty, uh, but I want the glass-like detail when I pour my resin on there. And Amazing Mold Rubber is what you want to use if you want to have absolute clarity and detail. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to pour it on this. And it's going to be a little bit of tricky to build up a mold form around this, but I have a couple of ideas. I also have another little find that I found at my local Salvation Army. It's some kind of artistic display. And I managed to get it for five bucks. And it also has a really cool detail on it. This one will be easy to do because I could just pop it out of this frame. It's, it's almost like a glass tile. So as soon as I figure out how to get it out of here, I'll be good to go on that as well. Because this I could just put tape around the edges and pour right on top of it and easy peasy, I'm ready to go. Well, let's see. This is not going to let me have this out of here. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I could tape around it. No big deal. Now I also have a couple of sea creatures. Now I should do these in mold putty except for when you press things that are delicate in a mold putty they generally get broken. But it would be perfect for this. But I'm going to attempt to try it in the mold rubber because I'm going to have some extra and I'm going to build, mix up the whole container. So I'm going to try. Um, the thing you need to do is you need to adhere these things down. So I'm attempting instead of hot gluing I have some Wacky Tack, the poster adhesive stuff that you, I got this at the Dollar Tree. And so that's what I've started sticking on the bottom here. And I'm going to use that to stick in the bottom of this tin here to hold that down and then pour the liquid silicone on top. And I also have a seahorse, no, sorry, I have this starfish and I have the sand dollar. And this is another thing. The thing about sea the shells and starfish and stuff like that, it's great to make a mold of these and preserve them because you use these in your craft projects and they'll break they're very brittle they sort of smell fishy I bleached them but they still smell so I'm going to attempt to mold these in the mold rubber and I'm going to see what I get and if they don't work I have an extra one of each because they come in a multiple pack they come like this by this sea life treasures that's what they're called and at the craft store it's impossible to find some that aren't even broken in the package but I managed to luck out so I have multiples and so we'll see what happens I'm gonna give this a, give this a try so the first thing I'm doing is I'm putting this poster tack on the back of here and I'm just wadding it up in a little ball and I'm using it to fill in the areas at the back of the starfish legs because I don't want the mold rubber to run in behind it because if you do that then you've totally sealed your item in the silicone there's no getting it out so this will build a nice wall behind it and it won't fill in behind it and then when I remove it I'll have a nice little area to be able to pull my little starfish free so and the reason I'm doing this live is because I live in South Florida apologize about the glare I live in South Florida and the Amazing Mold Rubber is not heat based like the other Amazing Crafting products to cure. 
Amazing mole rubber is humidity based. So me living in South Florida, we're in the middle of high monsoon season right now. So I've actually had this stuff cure up on me in about two hours. So I'm doing this now and I'm hopefully, it's about 8.45 p.m. I'm going to plan on having my molds ready by midnight. So we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. So I have the four little legs and I'm pressing it in to fill in this little void here. I want to fill in that so no silicone is getting in there. And this stuff is a little bit sticky but it's not too sticky. I could do it with hot glue except for I don't want to have glue, glue blobs all over my I don't have a detail hot glue gun so this will do the job. Now with the sand dollar I'm going to try it with Sculpey. Um, I did fill in the back with a little bit of this uh, but I'm going to make a ring around the outside like a snake. Or maybe I'll just still do it with that stuff. But on that one glass dish, I'm going to use some Sculpey clay to make a, bo a border to fill. And we're going to see how that works. So I'm testing out some different experiments live on the fly for you. So I have this filled in. And I'm going to press this into here. Now I'm going to have a lot of area left over, so I want to get some other things to fill in. You know, you don't want to waste all this empty space. So, all right, now that I've put this in here, you can see that the that there's a void where it's not touching. I need to add some more clay there to fill that in so it's completely flush. I don't want any mold rubber to gather in down there. So I'm going to press it down on here and add a little more. I don't care if it's not pretty. All I care is that it's functional. And I'm being really careful because these are sort of a little bit porous and gritty and so I don't want to gently pull off any of the little legs or anything like that. I'm just winging it. Okay, that one. Okay, I need to put some on this one. this stuff is so much fun that I have so many things to mold. I have a whole box of things that I can mold every day for the next two months and not even put a dent in all the stuff I've set aside. It's just that much fun. You start finding items and vintage items and this plate my sister gave me and she has a set of them and when I went to visit her she fixes the wonderful, most wonderful breakfast and I wanted to steal her plate to to mold and she wouldn't let me do it. She wouldn't even let me mold it at her house even though I brought I brought mold putty with me. She's like, no, you're not putting that on my plates. And for Christmas she got me, she found a set of them at the vintage store that she took me to where she lives and she got me my own set for Christmas. So that was pretty awesome. So I'm doing the backside of it so I don't mind at all. Glass is pretty safe to mold with because you can always just throw it in the dishwasher and get it clean. So I've built up the back end here pretty good. I'm going to switch to clay when I finish up the sand dollar because this is a little bit repelling itself. It doesn't really want to stick to itself very well. So at least I know with clay, clay will work. Just trying to use what I have on hand and see what works and what doesn't. Because you can build mold boxes fairly easily out of pretty much anything. I really like using the tape, tape a paper border around something and I'm good to go. Like, like the mold I made of my stamp here, I have one on a wood block. 
and so all I did was put tape and paper around the outside of it and here's my mold just like that and I just keep it stored like this so I don't get it all dirty because I have an extra stamp <laughs> so you can do them pretty easy and then this tin I've used a lot of times you can see the residue these are things I hot glued in here for my acorns and the acorn caps so and I have another one that had that I used for the bolts because I have a lot of uh, spray glue in there so I just leave it and if I need a little more spray glue I spray a little more and then just stick the items in there but spray glue is really not going to adhere these little guys in there because they are of a natural organic substance so we're just gonna see how this works and I'm molding it around to my shape so it doesn't end up sticking out from my shape and I think this looks good so I'm gonna gently press down we'll get all things level can't press too hard because I don't want to break the arms off so now I have a whole bunch of all kinds of other little goodies what else can we stick in the box how about some little dice all kinds of items to be molded let's do some dice I got a tiny one okay I don't want them to do one that's too thick Oh, I have a little mahjong tile. I haven't done him yet. Let's do him. Do I want the tile to Chinese chop up or not? What else do I have? I have another little stick you over here. We'll stick you over here. Dominoes are always usable. I have a couple different ones. That one's even tinier. And these will just fill in the voids. These I think I'm just going to stick some... What else I have in here? Always have items on the, on the fly ready to go to fit in there. Oh, that one will fit. Let's see. I have a frozen Charlotte head. Maybe I will do that. Hmm. Let's see. Can't do that. It's too high. It's too high from the top of the container. So, what else do I have? Okay, I have an interesting starfish button. So, we'll do that. Since we're st oh that's too big oh, maybe I can put that here I try and fit as many objects as possible in my little molds here because the mold rubber is a lot of product so I'm gonna waste a lot of product so I'm gonna give it a try now I'm gonna need to hot glue those guys down. While I am wait while I am working on the other piece, got the glue gun. So we'll let this heat up, and I'll glue these items in place. Now I'm going to go back to this little guy. Now what I'm doing with the wacky tack here is I'm filling in the holes of this of the sand dollar because I don't want the silicone to flow down into there because then it will run out the back, and then my item will be stuck so I've pushed some of this into the crevices even if it gets down in there that's okay but I don't want it to all the way go through the back I tried to scotch tape method uh, if it was an item that was metal or plastic or something like that smoothing on with a bone folder some tape onto the back and burnishing it on really good works uh, it won't work in this case because it's sandy and gritty and has a texture to it and as you can see it's making dust so 
Um, I don't want to wet it to wash it off. I just want to make it work. So that's what I'm doing here. So and you can see there's little furry, hairy things in there. So this is going to be interesting. And I need something for a mold box for this guy. I don't have anything handy. What should I use? What should I? Oh, I know what I'll use. I will use the back of one of my juice glasses, which will be perfect. Okay. This is starting to repel this wacky tech now. Okay, so I have it pressed into the holes, and the rest, I think I'm going to put some clay on here. I just have some Super Sculpey. This is really good clay. It's baked clay. I don't mind. I have a whole box of it, so I don't mind wasting a little bit in experimentation. So I'm going to put this poster stuff away because I know it's already not working, sticking very well to this. So I'm going to use something that I know will stick to it because the Sculpey is a little more tacky than this. Okay, the Coke class is always a winner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, that's not big enough. That's not a winner. Hmm. Rummaging around, rummaging around. I think it's going to have to be a coffee mug. Ding, 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 got a winner. Okay, that, for, that fits perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I always do is I run scotch tape around the outside of it. And this is just regular old scotch tape. I'm going to get it started, but I'm going to leave the side open. And I'm just leaving the edge around. See how I'm building up the edge there? And I'm just sticking it to the edge and burnishing it down. And I'll make two layers around. Because once it fills in, all I need to do is cover up as deep as, I need about a quarter of an inch extra. But if I need two layers, I'll go around twice. I'm going to leave a little bit of the edge open so that I can get in there. Yeah, definitely going to have to go two layers. This is the quick and easy way for impatient crafters. I don't recommend you do it this way, but it does work when you have a smooth vessel that you're gluing to. Now let's get some of this clay. This isn't as sticky as I remember. So I'm just warming this up a bit. You know what? Since I have the hot glue gun going, I wasn't planning on using the hot glue gun. I'm just going to use it. You got to work fast. And I'm running around the edge so I make a barrier so that the silicone won't run in. I don't mind if it makes a lip, but I don't want it to get under there. So I'm just going to hurry up and set that down. So 
So this one is really not going to require that much mold rubber to fill it up. So filling it to the top of this tape is going to be about as deep as I need it. Because you need to cover your item about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to add a little more scotch tape around to reinforce my border and to make sure that it's all level and consistent. And scotch tape is cheap and easy. You can use duct tape. You could use packing tape. Um, mine is in, my packing tape happens to be in one of those torture chamber devices to try and actually help you in putting the tape around boxes, so that ends up making more of a mess than help me, so I just use this. If I need it taller, sometimes I'll put, I'll tape the paper, I'll tape a piece of paper and wrap it around, but I'm going to make sure that this is all burnished down. No air is going to get in and it's not going to seep down. I'm going to rub it in a little bit around my edge because it has a ceramic border that's exposed here. So, and I don't really need it to go out all that far, so we won't do that. So this one's ready to go. And now let's quickly hot glue these little guys down. And it doesn't have to be pretty, it just needs to be down and if it eeps out on one side or another, that's it. Move it around. Gonna put a nice blob on here. One day I need to invest in a real hot glue gun. My free crafty one is pretty much outgrown itself, but it does the job. Okay, this one needs more hot glue. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, we set you aside to dry. <laughs> Sometimes you need to build up the glue on the item in order to glue it down. So if that's, that's the case here, because I have that little shank on there, and you need to build up some hot glue on the back in order to for it to have something to balance on it. So I'm just going to let that one set up. Okay, what number do I want to have up? A five, three, hmm. I'm going to go with the two. So two is going to be up. You want to get your strings of glue out of there. Now, I have done this domino before the blank side up, so now I'm going to do the number sides up. So I can have some both ways. And I'm going to go around the item in a square to build a little wall. You have to sort of, this is low temp glue, that's why I have to sort of work fast, because it hardens up faster than the high temp. Almost ready to go here. So I've left space around each item so nothing is touching. Okay, and let's get this button going. I love this button. I found this at a thrift store which was had loads of vintage buttons and stuff, and I went there with team member Brenda. I met her. Back in May, when she was vacationing in Florida, she was she went to St. Augustine, and I met her in Daytona, and so we went to this antiquing place. We had lunch, and we went junk finding, and we had a grand time, and we found some of the best things, and one of them was this seahorse button here. Starfish button, sorry. I really wanted a seahorse, and I have not found one. I'm going to have to order one from the West Coast. The thing that's nice about Florida is we pretty much have shells everywhere, but a lot of the gift stores that sell a lot of shells and things down at the beach have all gone out of business because they're tearing everything down and building condominiums everywhere, and it's really sad. But So not so many places have real shells anymore. But I really want to do a seahorse. Okay, The glue is not cooperating. 
third time a charm, maybe. All right, here we go. I'm going to have to hold this for a second in place. Okay, and everyone is below the edge of the lip of the tin, so I don't need to add any more tape. Oh, I have a piece of glue. Might need to have a paper clip handy. Like I have a piece of glue right here sticking out, so I need to get that out of here. Or perhaps a exacto knife. I don't want that there. Trying not to scratch my dice up. <laughs> Okay, if all else fails, the one last thing I was going to try is I was going to get the barbecue lighter. It's the thing that's handy. When, when you work in your kitchen, that's what is handy. <laughs> you, have, you have everything at your disposal. Matches, fire, whatever you need. Alright, let's go. One more little fuzzy out of here. Okay, this one's ready. And this one's ready. And so one more thing... I don't know how I'm going to get this out of here. But since this one is such going to be deep, I might not have enough to do this one. So what I'm going to do is... Let's see if I get this off. Okay. I'm going to put some scotch tape this way. because it's got these little, where I just took the frame bracket off, there's a little thing there. So I'm gonna block that, make that make a reverse wall. I don't mind, the shapes are going off the edge anyway. They're not a full shape. So I'm gonna put some tape there. Then I'm gonna go around the edges like I was. I am going to put some tape all around the inside as well because I don't want the silicone to seep into this frame here because there is a loose fit. I don't know how I'm going to get this off. I thought it slid right out, but it doesn't. So that's okay. I'll work around it. If all else fails, tape it down. Tape is your friend and it won't let anything in. So I've got a whole roll of tape. Not a problem. Because it's not going to get in there under the scotch tape. I hope. That's my plan. <laughs> so, if you ever have any questions about preparation or how to go about doing something, please feel free to ask us. Leave a message on our Facebook page. Leave a comment, send us an email, uh, all the information is located on our blog, or you can contact the 800 number at the company directly, um, at the moldputty.com website, so don't ever feel like you're on your own, you're not. We have a whole team of artists in all different backgrounds working with this stuff, and we want to help you make what you want to make. And please, share what you make with us. We have a user gallery also there on the moldputty.com website. Please post your creations there. We do periodically have giveaways for 
creations posted there. So if you're interested in maybe winning some more product, share your projects. We encourage it. We want to see what you all are making with this stuff. This is amazing. I'm sorry about the glare. I can't do anything about that. Light and glass are not friends. <laughs> okay, so now I am wrapping some more tape around. Filling in. Doubling up. I'm going on the outer edge now. This will be reinforcement. It may bow out a little bit, but I'm not going to pour it that deep to begin with because... I'm just making a slab. I want to use this more as a stamp than as a mold. Um, I really want to use it for jelly, my faux jelly plate printing. Uh, but then I can also use it for texturing, for pouring the resin directly onto. The shapes are great. I can um, cut them apart and have little little beads that are this pattern which would be really fun this is just such an amazing background that I, there's so many things I could use it for okay now I didn't clean this beforehand I just took it out of the bag there's some gunk in here I want this out just scraping this out there's just some residue in there looks like a sticker residue so I will get my little trusty alcohol spray bottle. This will help everything clean up, especially with the mold rubber. The rubbing alcohol is your friend. It will clean up the stickiness of the rubber compound and everything. It cleans up the resin, it cleans up the dyes, everything. It just is a lifesaver. And I put it in a little spray bottle. I use it all the time. Because then you don't have to worry about spilling the whole bottle all over the place to get in the bottle sticky. Okay, so my little piece is clean, and I need a little bit more tape. Okay, so this one is prepared. I'm doing this real time so you can see how long it's taken. Okay, set that one aside. And then last one here. This is the one I'm going to put the Sculpey on. And I'm not making this pretty. I'm just going to slap it on there. <laughs> Maybe I should have done this with some mold putty. But I don't want to waste that either. So I'd rather waste this. I don't use polymer clay all that much, so we're just going to give this a whirl. Okay, it has a nice lip here already. Can you see? There is already a little bit of an edge. So I'm just putting it up against that edge, and I'm not letting it go over it. I'm just mashing it up to it because I'd like to have that detail there because then it will be something to trim against after I use it. This clay is really nice. It comes out in little bars like this. So I'm just going to add a little more. Okay, this is working really good. Except for I'm very sorry about the glare. I'm very excited to see what these glass dishes come out like. And I'm definitely going to go along the edges and do a mold putty border with that. That would be great. You just have to, you'll come across something in your house and then all of a sudden it'll be Eureka. Ooh, I can make a mold of that. 
I can make a mold of that. Pretty much anything. Anything is possible. I really like making molds of the bottom of all kinds of different plastic water bottles. If you ever looked at those, they're pretty interesting. They would certainly make nice, interesting faux stained glass pieces in resin. I have a little. I have a collection of a few uh, real interesting ones that I've come across. Then they go in the recycling bin. I mold it, make them go in the recycling bin. I don't have to save it. I just save my mold, which is nice. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, we're almost done here. Now this is just to keep the silicone from getting away. <laughs> it's the only reason I'm doing this. I'm just building a wall. I could do a wall with hot glue and glue um, corrugated cardboard along the side. I could do it with paper and tape. But I'm doing this because I don't want to do all that. Because I'm gluing it to glass, which is a slick surface. All I want to do is just get it on there fast and do the purpose. And we're experimenting here, seeing if this works. Because I haven't tried to do this before and I just thought of it. And so, what the hey? I'm still mixing up the whole container, so I gotta have more things prepared because I do not like to measure the whole rubber in small quantities <laughs> because it is a it's it's doable if you just want to mix a small amount you can and the instructions are on there and it's easy to do it's just me personally I have a lot of stuff I want to mold so I don't mind mixing up the whole container I just make sure I have enough things prepared and ready to go and that's not an issue and if I don't fill a mold that's okay too I let it cure and just how you can build on to amazing mold putty you can add on and add on and add on. You could do the same thing with the mold rubber. You let the batch cure, and if it's not deep enough and it's not covering the item all the way, no problem. Just let it cure, mix up another batch, pour it on top, and it will fuse to itself, provided you don't put the mold release on it. So as long as you do it that way, it's like magic. Okay, let's see how high this is. Checking the depth. All right, now I've got three molds ready to go. Let's get the hot glue gun out of here. Tape out of here. Now we are ready to mix up some mold rubber. Let me wipe off my hands. I have clay on them. And there's only one thing that you need to mix up mold rubber, plastic knife. And the type of plastic knife that you want is one that's got a flat edge at the back so you can scrape along the container. So I'm going to pop this open and show you in real time. It has the little instructions here. It says open time 20 minutes, demold time 2 to 4 hours. Me, I'm definitely on the short side. It comes with the little measuring cuppies. This little scoop is to measure the catalyst. So if you're doing a smaller quantity, one little scoop of this catalyst, the, this pink liquid only goes in this little cuppy. One scoop of this goes to two of these, which is two ounces. The top of these on there, if you go to the top line, is one ounce. So you would need for two ounces of the rubber compound mixed to one scoop of the catalyst. That's per the direction. So if you forget, don't worry. But if you want to do it the easy way, 
open up each one, mix the entire bottle of Catalyst into the entire container of the rubber base, which is just like this. They've changed the packaging slightly. It's in three languages now. It used to just be in English. So now it is in, I believe, Spanish and French also. So if you notice the packaging is a little bit different at the store, that's why. Uh, mold rubber is now available at Michael's also, Michael's Craft Stores. And all four products are available at Michael's. So I'm just using an X-Acto knife to cut open the lid. I try not to let it get in the rubber base, but I failed this time. Sometimes it just falls in. So I'm using my knife to scrape off the excess because I need every little drop of that stuff. And I don't want it on my hands at all possible. Okay, the rubber base is white. Oh, it's dripping everywhere. Yuck. I think I just got some on the floor. <laughs> If I did, I put paper towel on it. So I have it all over my craft surface here now. But that's okay. Here we go. Rubbing alcohol. Spray, spray, spray. Paper towel. All gone. I got some on the bottom of this. We are good to go. All right, now I'm going to open up the catalyst. Shake your catalyst very well before you dump it. Sometimes you'll see that the color is dropped down in the bottom. Still is pink, but you'll see some is separated. Just shake it up and make sure that it's all incorporated. And just open the foil on this one. And what I do is I stir this up a little bit first, the rubber base. And I make a little void down in the middle. And I dump the catalyst into it. And I just let it sit for a minute. And then I get rid of all the, the packaging and everything. And I clean up any mess that I have created. I might have a little stickiness on my hands, which I do. I clean up my X-Acto knife because I might need to go back and use it. So then it's all clean. So that I just let it sit for a minute and then you can start stirring it right away. I just like doing this because I stir too fast. You're gonna wanna stir this for a couple of minutes until it's fully incorporated. And there won't be any more pink liquid swirling around it. It'll soak into it pretty quick. But the thing that's nice about having the plastic knife is that it's got the straight edge so you can really get the edges clean. And then there's also the serrated edge on the other side which helps scrape up the bottom. And then when you're done pouring and everything, I just leave them on the side, set them out in the garage and see this one's all dry. Now when it's really thin it takes a little bit longer to dry than when you're making a mold. A week or two, I leave them dry, and then I peel out the waste, cut it up in little bits, put it in a little baggie, pull my knife out, peel off the extra, and then I'm good to go. I have a container to make a craft project with. I have a lid to use as a mold as a mold box, and I'm recycling. So that makes me happy because I'm all about recycling. So now that all the liquid is pretty much gone, I can start really stirring this. Because at first I'm like folding it from bottom to top. And it's working very nicely. Stir, 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 stir. 
this is the hardest part just mixing it all up and you want to stir it completely because down at the bottom it gets a little resistant to want to come off the exact bottom so you want to do a lot of extra scraping to get up sort of like mixing pancake batter but pancake batter that's really gooey there won't be any lumps or anything like that in it it's, tur it's totally liquidy but it's about the consistency of molasses and if there's any air bubbles in it that's alright when you pour it, it they will dissipate okay so I'm all incorporated now you can see all uniform pink this is a nice pink batch sometimes it varies in the shade of the pink which is okay sometimes it's lighter sometimes it's darker no worries it's just dye in it okay now the first thing I want to do let's get my bigger items poured actually I want to pour my little items because my bigger items don't need a lot of mold rubber poured on them but there is one thing I need to do beforehand I need to put a little oil on my sand on my starfish I have olive oil spray I love this stuff now you can use Vaseline in this case I don't want to use Vaseline because I don't want the Vaseline to fill in all the details of that but I'm putting this as a mold release because I don't want the silicone to fuse to the dry shape here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this on my mat and then I'm going to dab it on because I don't want to disturb my little guy here I dab some on my dominoes here just to make sure that the holes don't get clogged and on my little mahjong tile and I'm just dabbing this on I could spray it on there directly but I don't want it to mess with that wacky tack that I adhered it down with so just in case it's not gonna the glass will be fine because it's super smooth I'm only doing this because this is detailed if it wasn't so detailed and porous I wouldn't bother you could also seal it with a glue or a Mod Podge um, to help it will still give you the texture but then it will make the item more smooth I don't want a glossy starfish that's why this item would be better suited for mold putty but I'm, I'm doing this as an experiment because I'm trying to see how many things can I actually mold and I've been told not to do things like this but I'm stubborn to do it anyway because I want to make the things I want to make and so I'm doing this for you as well as me this is an experiment I'm gonna brush a little bit on here this this piece is great this little button because not only has a dull gold finish it also has shiny details so that's gonna make a really nice contrast and you can see the mold rubber here it's got a lot of bubbles going on right now but that's alright and it's starting to get really thick so I've been talking to y'all for about an hour and ten minutes now so we're gonna see how you just put that in the rubber how long this is actually going to take to cure all right and I'm also going to put some of this on my sand dollar hmm. I think I'm running out of spray here I do use this a lot and you don't want to inhale your spray <coughs> it sort of does smell it smells okay it just makes a really fine mist that makes you want to cough I haven't tried other brands of cooking spray um, so experiment this does work on the mold putty too <coughs> So if you want, if you need a mold release for something, this does work. So you can see that the it's really soaking into the sand dollar and discoloring it. So it will do the job, but it's soaking it in. So this is going to be a little bit deteriorated. But that's all right. That's why we're experimenting. Okay. Now we're ready to pour. Give it a little stir. 
and I'm just going to pour. And I'm gently brushing this around to dissipate any bubbles that might have been forming at the top of the sand dollar. Because I don't want to have any bubbles on the mold right where the object, because it will trap air. Because it is a porous item, air bubbles might get trapped there. So you want to apply with a brush, but I'm just gently rubbing across the top of it with the knife to make sure I pop any bubbles that might have formed there without disturbing the piece from moving how I glued it down. So now I can go and add a little bit more. This is where it gets to be an ooey gooey mess when it goes over the edge of the container. Okay, so this one is done. We'll let that sit and pop any bubbles that come up. Okay, now. For this one, I'm going to pour and fill in the void areas and let it flow around. And I'm going to raise it up high and do this. If my camera wasn't in the way, I'd raise it up higher. Okay. Now I see that the top of my starfish, right there, it's higher than the top of my box. So, time to modify the box. Have my scotch tape handy. So I'm just going to wrap some scotch tape around and pour in a little bit more. Yes, this is all live, unedited. I'm doing this on the fly. Oh, that's not work. If you have mold rubber on your finger, the tape will not stick. <laughs> I need to add, see how my starfish is sticking up out of there? I need to cover that up by at least an eighth of an inch, and that's minimally. I don't want to... I don't want it to tear when I pull the item out, so I need to cover that up by about a quarter of an inch, so I need to build up a little edge here. I've done this so many times. You, I've done this when I've filled in with a plastic cup. If you touch the mold rubber to the tape, it'll just peel right off when you take it out. Um, it might have a little bit of stickiness on it from the tape. Just rub it with alcohol, the stickiness will come off. As long as it cannot escape everything is doable and perfectly fine. It's better to clean up any little smudges of mold rubber anywhere as you go so that you don't transfer it you can't really see it, you just feel a sticky mess. So you don't pour it and get it everywhere. So you see all the bubbles are raising up to the top here. And you can just tap around. Now I'm going to rub on my little starfish here like I was before, but I'm doing it really gently just to see if I pop any bubbles. If I hadn't have packed all those other things in there with it, I would have applied some of the mold rubber with the paintbrush a very loose bristle brush that would actually get in the little crevices so that there won't be bare bubbles. So we're just going to see. We're going to see what happens. But I'm making sure that I break any big ones. It's so detailed, I think it will be fine, but we will see. I'm not anticipating a fail here, so I'm taking every precautionary step that I know. And if it doesn't work, I will share the results either way. Because this is all a learning experience for everybody's benefit. So now that I've got most of the air bubbles, I'm filling in over. And I've got the extra wall. 
See how the mold rubber is starting to get gelatinous? That's because it is very humid out. It is actually raining outside right now. Since I've started, it started storming outside. So it's starting to get gelatinous and it's starting to solidify. And I've only mixed this up about 10, 15 minutes now. Okay, so that's good. The depth is nice. I'm gonna rotate it around. I found out since I've done all these mold makings, my counters are not level. <laughs> so I have to periodically rotate my items around so that they don't or don't all lean to one side because the mold rubber will settle to whatever level state it is. All right, so I need to decide which one am I going to pour the rest of the mold rubber in. I only have enough for one plate, so I'm going circles. So here we go. I only have enough for one. I don't have enough for both. Well, maybe I might have enough for both. We'll see. Maybe I can do them thin. Can always place them in there and redo them, re add more. Nope, I only have enough for one. The container's almost completely empty. So you see how I'm scraping with the back side of the knife. Oh, I've got my finger in it. There's a point where you get to where there's actually some on the outside of the container and there's no way around getting your hand in it once you start rotating it around because you forget. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. Yay. And because it is so ooey and gooey, there's a point where you can't get any more out of the container. It's just very frustrating. So as best as you can, and then you just let it harden up, and then you can just peel the excess out like I showed you on the other container. I do try and scrape off what I can off the back of the container, just so I don't get my hand in it. So there's that. Now I'm going to gently spread this out to fill in where it hasn't flowed already, because I have some mold rubber on my hand, a little bit on my pinky finger. So I'm not going to pick this plate up, I'm just going to leave it just here, just like this. And I have just enough in here. The thing that would be great about this is that I can use this as a jelly slab, as a faux jelly plate on the back side, this part here, and then I'll have texture on the other side because it'll be totally level and a flat surface. If you wanted to make your own faux jelly plate, you could do it in a takeout container, salad box, a uh, plexi picture frame. You could do it on a piece of glass from a picture frame and do a tape border on it. Um, I've made some that are about, a, I did a, one on an acrylic block. You could see a previous video on that. I did a, um, on one of my stamp blocks about a three by five size. Oh, I've made so many of them. And then some of them I cut up. I made so many different shapes. Oh, a coffee cake, a coffee cake container, which is a long rectangular shape. That is a perfect box for, um, a jelly slab. Um, plus it had a neat texture in the border of it. But the top part was the part that I wanted to use. So that all worked out great. But this is going to be very interesting. And you can see how this is really starting to firm up now because it's not really wanting to go where I'm pushing it. It's sort of stretching and then it's going back. So this is about to the point where I'm, I'm not going to be able to pop the bubbles. That's all I'll be able to do is to pop the bubbles. I have a, I have a jelly slab that I haven't shared with you yet. And once I have a project going, I will share it. Um, I'm really excited about it, though, because I've been planning it for a while. And I haven't had a chance to make a project with it yet, but I will be soon. So keep and stay tuned for that. I'll do a video for it, but I'll have to I'll have to rig it in an area where I can get it on video and get it all in the camera. Because right now, to do it the way I have it set up now, the camera will only get a section of it, and you won't 
get the full effect. So we want to, we'll have to, do, I might have to have my husband do it actually with the video camera and not the webcam. Because the webcam you're really limited to how much space you have under the camera. So I've got my three molds going and my sticky gooey mess of, of the container here. So the mug here has one big bubble and a couple little ones. This looks pretty good. And the little tin here, just you could blow on the bubbles, um, but I don't want to stick my head under the camera because I'll knock it over. Now this one, there's a lot of little bubbles in here, and that is because that starfish, with all the little texture, all that has air trapped in there, which is why you would want to brush. Like say you did bark, you would want to paint, use a paintbrush, and paint it on into the crevices. But you'd want to seal, you'd want to seal it first. Paint on there with glue, or paint on there. Paint on there with the oil or maybe even paint it on with a coat of Vaseline or spray it with a spray polyurethane just to, to fill in some of those holes to, to, of the detail. Not to remove the detail, just to, just to seal it so that the silicone is not going to soak into the item where you can't get it off. And some people on the, some of the designers on the team, this has been tested, so you, you don't want to not seal it with something or get it to where you can't get it out because then that's just a waste but if something happens and you have a you have a mold fail not to worry because you you can cut up the silicone and use it as filler in another mold and also say you have a mold putty mold that doesn't work the silicone will fuse to the mold putty if you do not use a mold release I had made those stamps with my mold putty molds and I didn't recall that I had put Vaseline on them and so I had cut up the stamps to make my frog mold. I cut up everything that I had made in mold putty and I cut it up to use this filler because I was making that giant mold for the frog. This is my moon that I made. It is completely fused together there is no getting these apart. So the next time I need filler, it's all silicone. The mold putty, the mold, it will fuse together. So if you want to make a stamp from something that you've made a mold putty mold out of, fine. Just make sure that you put Vaseline on it very well so the two will not fuse together because it will. And make sure you do it over the edges along the outside edge here and everything because some might eep over the sides and it will fuse there so you don't want to tear that so make sure you put it all over everywhere and then put this on your nonstick craft mat to set so now I'm going to set these aside and it's been about an hour and a half now so we will see I'll bring back another little video I'm gonna stop this video but I will make another little video when I demold Okay, so thank you very much, and I will see you soon.